topic is special education inequality. I've grown up with special ed children my whole life. My mom works in a school system. She's in a self-contained room. They have a variety of disabilities. So I helped during the summer with that. I helped during school breaks. Um, I also, I've been part of Best Buddies and Unified Sports. So that kind of gathers what people would call average children with those who are special needs. And it really gets, it bonds them and it builds friendships that they might not have the opportunity to form on their own because everybody has their own ways of meeting people and some aren't the most skilled at it. Um, in the U.S., there's been studies showing how poorly treated special ed children are. There's only been about 10, um, but the connection between bullying and de developmental disabilities is really huge. Um, it's, I have that studies found children with disabilities are two to three times more likely to be bullied than their non-disabled -dis peers. I think um, we need to educate the general public in order to fix this. It's really important that they see uh, special ed children are the same as average children. They're humans, they have the same feelings. They even a lot of times have the same thought process so they can't express it. So we, something we really need to work on. I personally met one kid who, we're gonna call him Ricky because I don't wanna use his real name. But I met him sophomore year in high school, and he was the sweetest person I ever met. He would he'd go to all the sports, he loved going to school, he knew all the teachers, all the students, but he had some issues with some kids because he was, he had autism and other things, and he couldn't speak properly all the time. He doesn't understand certain words, so it, it would be like have talking to somebody who sometimes is from another country, you know, they're not used to the same language. They have other ways of communicating. So it really takes um, people who are understanding to help people sometimes and ask them, what do you really mean by this? What do you really want? Or, you know, so he had trouble. He, we had prom senior year and a lot of his friends had graduated already because we have a program that extends for three years for them to stay afterwards. He came up to me one day upset and he was like, this boy keeps picking on me. He was in tears. He was like, I don't know why he's picking on me. So the next day I, I said to him, you know, be a bigger person, ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He came to me the next day upset again. He said, he's making fun of me because I don't have a date for prom. So I was like, well, that's not nice because you know, he's human and everybody has days. Like some people can get dates, some people can't. It's really not a big deal at the end of the day. We all just go and have fun. So he said to me, um, I really need a date, but I can't find anybody who's free. I was supposed to go with my ex, that didn't happen. So I said, you know what, why don't you just come with me? Why not? He wants to go, I wanna go. We can have fun together, it was no big deal. So he got excited, he planned everything. He chose the tux, he chose the tie. He came in with pictures and was like, look, it matches. And I, that melted my heart. I love that he was so excited about it. So prom time came around and my best friend and her boyfriend were sitting at our table and her boyfriend does not like disabled kids at all. He finds them disgusting sometimes, he finds them rude, he's embarrassed to be seen with them and he's very disrespectful. So he was saying things and I had a problem with that so I confronted him and we had gotten in a few fights but I, it, I figured it was better for me to argue with him than have him attack my friend because there's no reason for it. So we finally settled things and I said to him, you know, everyone else in the table is in agreement. He's equal to us. He has the same rights. He's coming. You can leave, but he's staying. So he ended up going with us and he had the time of his life. We took pictures, we danced. And it was funny because at the end of the year during graduation, he came up to me and he thanked me again for prom. And he said, you were my best friend in high school. And he said, thank you. And it was nice because I realized even just one dance with him showed him that not everybody's mean to him and he can do things like everybody else. And I, it really made him happy. He was happy to be with everybody and treated equally. So I think it's really simple to be nice to special ed children. I don't understand why people choose to take out their anger on them, but I think it comes from fear.
And personally, I think fear comes from ignorance. And I feel it's our duty as educators to teach future generations, okay, you're afraid because he's different. He can't do the same things, or maybe he speaks differently, maybe he looks different, or she. And that's okay, but there's no reason to fear that. I think we have to show children that they're really, in, at the end of the day, the same. There's kids who they might see as not as smart, but those kids will, might focus in on one person, on one thing like math, and that will be their brilliant subject. And it's amazing what kids can do with special needs once you get to know them, honestly. Even physical needs, like anything that's off, there's so many, there's Special Olympics, there's so much that they can do that is really the same as what we do, just in a little bit of moderation or, you know, with assistance, and it's great for them. So I think, honestly, it's our duty to do that because there's even people who are older than them, like I know there's parents and grandparents who have the same fears, and they're gonna continue to teach the next generations what they already know. So if we don't change that, where's, gonna, where's the growth gonna occur? So I think that's really important. Um, I think it's important that we provide a better future for all of our children, not just the average children or the special ed. We need to do that by informing people. We need to create programs maybe, or even the special studies in the high schools, just so that people really can bond with them. I know there's already the special needs like sports and clubs, but we really need classes that explain everything. The examples that I have on this sheet are just a few things. This first one says, Children with disabilities should have the rights as normal children do. They should have the same rights. There should not be anything that they can't do. They should not be isolated. They should not be looked down upon. There's no reason to separate them from anything, whether it's sports or um, classes. We can involve them in the classrooms. Um, a person must be treated as persons of dignity and needs should be provided for. They are not any dumber, they are not any smarter, they are equal to all of us, so we should treat them so. The 13 legal categories for, we call them exceptional exceptionalities, are autism, deaf blindness, deafness, emotional disturbance, intellectual disability, hearing impairment, multiple disabilities, orthopedic impairment, other health impairments, specific learning disability, speech or language impairment, traumatic brain injury, and visual impairment. These all fall under the category of special needs. Um, that's something we need to explain. We need to make sure all children understand that it's not just a brain thing or it's not just a physical thing. It can be multiple things. And that doesn't mean that anyone should be treated any differently. It can be psychological, social, spiritual, physical, mental. But at the end of the day, we're all human and we need to really stress that in order to create a more peaceful world. So, thank you. Any questions?